Through his Viani Dance Company, Greg has managed to kickstart and propel many other careers and to take their works to different parts of the world. Today, Gregory Makoma is the young creative we are celebrating. Wow, that is such an impressive list. When you hear us talk about some of those awards and you have that flashback of some of the things you've done, do you go like, wow, I've done a lot? Or do you go, wow, I have so much more to do? Uh, wow, my goodness, I'm, I'm telling myself now I have another 25 years to still do more. But really, I mean, I, if you look at those accolades, it's already affirming that it's a decision that I've made clearly based on the passion I have for dance. Let's go back to a very young Gregory. What was young Gregory like? And what, at, what prompted young Gregory to say, you know what, I want to be a dancer. I want to, I want to learn more about this art of movement. I grew up in Soweto in Orlando East. And I, I was living quite close to a hostel. And over the weekends, I would be watching the migrant workers who were actually demonstrating their own traditional forms. And my love for dance started then. And at home, we had a small television set, black and white at that time. So, I, and I saw Michael Jackson come on our screen for the first time. And also, at that time, we, we had a lot of political tension in our country. And it was the first time I was seeing a black person portrayed in a positive manner that way. And I said to myself, no, this is what I want to do. I want to use um, dance as a form to change and to touch people. And so that was really the beginning for me. So you saw Michael Jackson do the moonwalk. Did you then moonwalk to your parents and go, I want to dance? What I, was I, their reaction? I, I moonwalked to my parents. I had to moonwalk back, actually, <laughs> because the reaction was like, you know, you go and finish school. Uh, because my parents had another desire for me, you know, to be a medical doctor. Okay. And as you know, you know, the professions at that time, you know, dance was not a career choice. And during that time. Um, it's different today. So I had to prove myself to them that it is a viable career and it can actually impact also on society. Really talk to me about that challenge because you're basically a boundary breaker. You're now a pioneer in your own environment because this is unheard of. Gregory wants to dance. We have another vision. Do you describe that? Were your parents one of those people that were like, okay, you're going to have to prove it to us and then we'll, we'll believe it? Do you describe that as one of the big challenges in your life? You, you faced many, but that initial changing the mindset, the perception of people that they think they know you, they think what is, what is good for you and they have an idea about where your life needs to go. Mm. Well, it was also, you know, not just to, ch uh, to challenge my, the perception of my parents of what careers should be, but also to challenge the perception of society in general. Mm. And I had to prove myself also to, to my own in immediate environment that I grew up in around my friends to say that instead of going to university and study medicine, I want to study dance. And for them also, as my parents, uh, for my parents' side, um, I had to actually prove and work harder uh, in terms of being successful in it. So failure was not an option. Who do you credit or, or a person, family, friend, maybe um, somebody that you connected with that kept to you, that told you, you know, Gregory, this is your path. Don't, don't move off this path. There's, there's greatness in you. Or was it something that you always knew was inside you and you didn't need that external motivation? Well, you know, um, uh, like every career that has been built, you know, you need people who can motivate you and who can mentor you in the process. So I was fortunate enough, I got a scholarship to study um, at moving into dance, a Johannesburg-based organization, which then whole, uh, gave me a, a full-time scholarship in terms of a dance profession. And then I later went to study in Belgium. I got also a full time scholarship to go and study in Belgium and it was when I was in Belgium that I started realizing the impact actually I could actually bring back into the country when I was looking at South Africa from the outside and realizing that um, we were going through a transformation as a country but how do I also as a citizen of this country become part of developing the artistic landscape. That's why I created Vrani Dance Theatre, um, to ensure that we do have um, a legacy that I, I leave behind in form of dance. 15 seconds. What is on, you've done so much. What is more in store for you? Well, you know, the company is growing at the moment, and it's my 25 years celebrating a dance in this country um, and the world. Uh, presently, the company is in Canada. They left wow. last night uh, with the work of Luanda Sidia, who is our artistic director. And so when you see that happening, that um, uh, through mentorship, you can also build other careers and, and, and individuals who can take up leadership in dance. 
So, what a great story. Thank you very much for joining us here in studio. And uh, I hope you keep on inspiring and uh, telling more people that they can, that they, wherever they grow up, that's, that's not their limit. Okay, his name is Gregory Makoma. He's one of the most successful dancers this country has ever seen. His company, Viani Dance Theatre, has produced creative and hard-working and award-winning dancers and choreographers. He is this week's celebrated young creative.